Hello YouTube, it's Sunday, November 6th. We got the new observations from today finally out. A, uh, about a 1500 uh, California time. This is what you're looking at right now. And uh, we'll take a look at the observations from today. You see down here solution date 1550 on the 6th. And they've gone up a, another number on the observations used. They went up two number here on observations total. Got the last observation 11.6 and they went back to condition code 1. This is what the, the last one looked at over here. And uh, as you can see they had 775 there, 5 and 5, and they had it at 2. Uh, like I said before, my, uh, my theory is that it's, uh, it was further away last time than it is this time. So the only way you're going to improve upon something is to be able to improve upon it. And seeing as how it was already zero, you can't improve upon that. So you knock it down to about three, and then you can step it up as your new observations come in. You look down here, uh, this is the last observation here. And it's April 19th, 2010. And uh, it was much, much further away last time. Here's the new distance right here, today's distance. Here it was last time, so it's much closer this time. Plus, they have new equipment at Goldstone. You're going to get a much better reading than you got last time. So, like I say, it's kind of hard to improve upon a zero. So they knocked it down to three, so they could take and knock it back up when they got their new observations. And at the end of these observations, they're going to be taking them for the next few days. So it'll be back to zero, just like it was at the end of the last observations. But these are going to be much better because it's closer and they have new equipment. And we uh, this this is the the one I'm, I made up a new one on here. This is 2005 YE55, and the other one is YE55 2005. That's from the uh, April 19th, 2010 solution. This is the new solution here, so you can compare those two along with the horizon readings. These are the horizon readings I'm using right here. I use the same two-day space as I did last time. And I'm calling the new one YE55HZ. I've got N1 for last year's solution. I've got N4 for Friday's solution. So we can compare the distances on those. And here are the numbers I'm using down here. And uh, we can take a look at that. And like I said, this is what you have going on at current, your current positions here. And we can go and look at the one of you from Soho, and they're over here. Now, uh, one thing, uh, people keep talking about this star. It's, it's a binary star. You can see it separate right there when you zoom out on it. That's Libra, Alpha Libra, or Alpha 1 Libra, and this is the other one. And they're, they're close together. They're a binary twin. That's why it looks a little bit odd-shaped on C3, and you see two of them actually on C2, just like you should see. It's only 10 minutes of separate, yeah, 10 seconds of separation on them. So we'll take and we'll zoom back out and center on these. And you zoom in, you can see, like I say, you've got two different sets of data here. These over here, this is the one from last year's April 19th readings, radar observing. This is from today's radar observing. And if you look at it, there's only 197 kilometers difference between April 19th, 2010 and November 6, 2011. 197 kilometers. And this time we have much better data than we had last time. And that would be what you get if you go to this page and look at it. You would get these two over here. Now if you go and you use the horizons interface like I did here, you're going to get a specific point in time and a better, much better observation. If you look down here, they, they, they even put into the orbit the Perturb uh, perturbations of Ceres, Pallas, and Vesta. 
Not only do they use the Earth and the Moon and the Sun, they use these asteroids as well. So that's how accurate this is. is. People keep saying, oh, the gravity's going to affect it. All that is baked into the pie. They even bake into the pie these three big asteroids here. So forget about how oh, the gravity's going to make a shift. That, that's all baked into the orbit. It's, uh, that's how they make orbits up. And uh, we can look at the differences here. And you have, uh, this is from last year. And this is from today's here. So we have a difference of 208 kilometers. Okay, that's from Friday there. 208 kilometers from last year's and Friday's. And if I could get it to show up there. I have to zoom in on it more. You see how close these two are. That's from last year. And this is from Friday's. 211 kilometers. And we got much better data from the radar this time. This is the two from today. This is the one from Friday on November 4th. This is the one from today. And you're looking at a difference of 2,814 2, meters. So it's basically right on top of each other. That's amazing accuracy for an asteroid being measured from, by radar from the Earth. And as you can see there, the uh, it's still uh, 0 0.0067 from SOHO. So basically it's going to look the same on your other views. Uh, I don't know if I should even bother with it. But if you go back it's going to be the same uh, same information basically. And uh, i show the info here. And it's showing 326 467 and we can take and back up on it and we see it start counting up go ahead on it and we see it count down to 467 and it starts counting back up again so it's right basically right around in there and we got a distance of 326,467 to the earth and the moon's going to be basically the same as it was last time. So that would be about 714 UT. Back it up. You see it start counting up from 845. Go back the other way. You see it count down to 845. And then start going back up again. So it's basically going to be right in 845. So, we can uh, go through the other ones, but I don't really think it's necessary because it's going to be about the same. Uh, I guess we could take and look at what it's going to look like from Earth zipping across the sky. Now, this is going to be on the 8th at 7. Uh, we can take and change that around here. Change it to the 7th. And here it is still in the sun. You're in the Earth's center right here. So I'll work it ahead from there. And you'll see it coming across. And we're up pretty close to uh, close approach right here. Back it up and slow it down. So that's basically what you're going to be seeing when it passes on Tuesday night. It's going to go right over the full moon, almost full moon. And so that's what you're going to be seeing there. All right, so uh, the only other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, the only, you get different readings when you try to figure exactly when we passed under the dust clouds track. Some people are still trying to say that we haven't passed under it yet. We passed under it back about the first. So the easiest way I figured to do it is to take and go way out here. And that's zoomed way out. Well, take and uh, your position is way out. So when you zoom in, we can take and uh, put it back on the close approach or when it passed the, uh, the Earth's orbit. 
and that was about 1016 or so and we can take and uh, center on that and then zoom in on it and then run it ahead from there and you'll see that it passed the Earth's orbit right around in there This is the best way I figured out how to get an accurate reading on it anyway. Zoom way out to where the, the angle is not a problem. And this way the angle is very, very, very small when you're out this far. And so once you get there, they can uh, go there. And so now we're at inside of the dust cloud if it were a regular object. And so from there what we want to do is take and change to a stationary location. Okay, so now we're in a stationary location. And what you're going to be seeing here is you're going to see the Earth come under you. And we can take and center on that. And so as it moves ahead from your stationary location of where the comet passed over the track, forever to get there like that. Let's take and move it ahead to the 30th. Okay, so here comes the Earth and the Moon. And when it passes right under you, that would be right about in there. That's about where you are in the right time frame. So right about there is when the Earth passed under Alanin's position. And if you look right here, it's point zero three six AU away from your stationary location where you were when Ellen passed over the track. Point zero three two six. And this is on November first, right at November first, almost midnight. So if uh you took that distance there, that would be point zero three two six, and you went over here and you put in point zero zero three two six and you see that we are going to be four million eight hundred and seventy six thousand eight hundred and ninety kilometers below where Ellen passed four million eight hundred seventy six okay so what is that in miles okay so in miles that's going to be three million 30,359 miles below the track of Allen, 0 0.0326 AU. So that happened back on November 1st, and it was way up above us, and nothing happened. No deadly glass, gas cloud, no raining meteorites, nothing like that. That's already passed. It's already done. So just wanted to tell you that, because some people are still saying that's going to happen, and uh, <laughs> way it already happened and nothing happened. Just like this is nothing going to happen here. It's, it's not going to hit the earth. It's not going to hit the moon. Nothing's going to happen. So <clears throat> with that, I'm going to say good night and talk to you later.